Happy Sabbath, everyone. We're so glad. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We're so glad you are here. And we are going to begin with some singing. And our first song is going to be, I Will Sing of Jesus' Love, number 183. I Will Sing of Jesus' Love, number 183. is going to be Jesus Loves Me. Now, um, I was asked to introduce ourselves. I'm Ruthie Reeves, and we've been coming here since 2022. And our family, this is Hudson and JJ, we like to practice hymns every week. So we sing one to two hymns every single day, and we practice them all week long. And so um, these are some of the hymns that we have practiced at home. And we're going to do 190 next, Jesus Loves Me. Number 190, Jesus Loves Me.
on every home, we want to learn that together we want to sweetly live. So number 451, together let us sweetly live. Number 451. Good morning, church family. Happy Sabbath. What a privilege to be able to be here with each one of you as we celebrate together 50 years of being His hands and His feet. Today I have the privilege of having Pastor Roland Smith and his wife Carol. And they don't know this, or they might know this, but I had the privilege of going to school with their son, David Smith, and their son-in-law, Samir Serrano, many years ago in another place, another time. But um, we have the beautiful privilege of having so many of our Tridelphians back here. And maybe as a show of hands, how many of you were here before 1970. Can I just see your hands? Anyone here before 1970? I see some hands there and some back here. Praise the Lord. Anyone here from the 70s? Can I just see your hands? Praise the Lord. Um, any of you from the 80s? Praise the Lord. 90s? Amen. 2000? 
to 2010. <laughs> and from 2010 to 2023. <laughs> Thank you so much all for being here. My name is Samuel Nunez. I'm the pastor, current pastor here at the Tridelphia Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I and my wife, Carolina, we came here in the year 2019. And it's been a privilege to be a part of this church family. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul and forget not all his benefits. I would like to ask Pastor Smith and his wife Carol to please come and, and share with us a little bit of what was Tridelphia like back in the 1970s. We came here in 1972 and we left in 1974 in August, but we are very, very grateful to be here at its very foundation when it was being built. And I see people here that I met earlier, and I am just so glad to say hello to them and to say hello to all of you. Amen. And I'm glad you're here that we can share together in Christ. <clears throat> yes. um, what was it like to be here in the 1970s? Sister Smith. Well, when we came, we had a two-year-old daughter and a six-month-old son. And shortly thereafter, Hazel came through and flooded the area. And it was interesting to note that the government decided to change the flood plan, which messed up all of Tridelphia's plans. <laughs> um, but the church was originally supposed to be down by the road, and they said, you can't build it there. You have to build it up here. So our, our plans had to go back to the architect. We had to get government permission for so many entities, <laughs> entities that changed and re-established. Re, uh, but we were here for the groundbreaking, and we were here to see this church partially finished. The beams were up, and the parsonage was in its shell form, but um, we didn't get to see the church until many years later, and it's finished. But we have um, great memories of being in Tridelphia. And great memories of the people here. It is a wonderful thing to be able to be in this process because the people were growing just as the church was growing. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Can we relate, brothers and sisters, with some of the things that they went through? Fifty years later, we, we can relate with having to deal with the county. And um, praise the Lord that we continue but to grow. And getting things through a government process hasn't changed. It's tough today. It was tough then. <laughs> well, we want to welcome all of you. And if you want to hear the rest of the story, please come back in the afternoon. And you will hear more about our Tridelphia Church family. Wow, good morning. Happy Sabbath. My name is Tony Williams. Do we have announcements? Yes. And uh, I've been a member attending Tridelphia since 2013, so I'm a youngin', even though I don't look like it. And it's just delightful to see all of you. I want to just cover a few things, announcements, things you need to know today to help you today. You know, this morning I got up and I had a thought, of, the first time I had this thought, so I was just thinking about the day that God inspired, sent his spirit into the hearts of men and women to start what would become Tridelphia Adventist Church in the 1960s. And I like this thought. I thought about that. That's the same God who inspired many men and women to come over the years to many other people and to you to walk through these doors and to many people to walk through these doors before there were doors. So uh, I just was thinking about that. God is faithful. He has been faithful. And may his name be glorified today. So the program, just so some logistical things, because some things have changed that are in the program. Uh, please consult your program for timing and, and, and all that's happening today. Uh, there is overflow seating, should we need it, in the fellowship hall. So that's all been set up there. There's big screens down there. You can watch what's happening here and downstairs, and I know there's some down there. So keep that in mind. Um, 
parking and traffic and foot traffic. I want to just keep you mindful of this. We know that our parking space is not uh, sufficient for everyone. So as you have seen, there are shuttles going back and forth to the church next door to us. So just keep in mind, you know, kids running around as you're moving, if you're driving your car, so just, want to just raise awareness to that detail. Now, we had planned until Wednesday to have lunch next door in the gymnasium next door until Wednesday. That wasn't long ago, was it? It wasn't long ago. But God has provided, and so I want to share with you that the program says, you know, that we'll be shuttling over next door for the, for the lunch in the, uh, in the gym, but that is not going to happen. Instead, we're going to have lunch on site. Again, this is plan C or D, and that just came into place on Wednesday. I, I say all that to just say I would, we would appreciate your patience as we try to sort some things out. And what we're going to do is we're going to have seating in two different locations, one in the fellowship hall, which is not adequate, and it's set up for something else right now. So our deacons are just ready to go to make that transition, but also there's seating and the food will be served in the back part of the parking lot. This means that some of you, all of you, most of you, are going to have to walk back to the back parking lot to get your food, to then sit there or come to the fellowship hall. And um, did I mention that wasn't the plan? So I appreciate your patience in doing and working with that. Now, some of us don't move as fast as we used to, and you might see some people that move a little slower, and, and I would encourage you, you're going to love this. I didn't see this coming till just now. We're going to encourage you to be the hands and feet Amen. of some of our older members who, or that, there's, that, that don't get around quite as quickly as, as I once did, and, uh, and, and, and offer, you know, help with trays or moving food or, or, or whatever you see. And I would say I, I, can, I, I know a little bit about the history of this church, and that has been the spirit of this church always. I, I, I look back uh, in, in the memories of just what all these people did, people holding six or seven offices, all kinds of stuff. And um, if you are still stressed by this idea, I want to encourage you to look at page eight in the program, bottom left corner. Is it bottom left? I don't have it in front of me. Bottom left. That is Tridelphians meeting in the woods on cinder blocks, uh, wood tables, I don't really know. So I'm just gonna say we're doing a lot better than what they had. We don't have to, I'm not sending you into the woods to cinder blocks. So just keep that in mind. There are three restroom locations in this facility. Uh, in the, in the in downstairs, there's men and women's rooms there. There are also restrooms that are available if you need in the parsonage, which is through this door here. And there's also one in, off the back of the mother's room. So just make note of those places. 15 minutes after we conclude our service, the intent, no, no, what will happen is we're going to take a group photo outside on the lawn next to the fellowship hall. Really, really want you to be in this historic 50-year anniversary photo. Visitors, members, any, wherever you, if you're here, we want you to be in that. Now, I know that some of you just heard me say 15 minutes after, and that mean, you, you think that means you can talk in here for 15 minutes. It doesn't mean that at all. You will not be in the photo, and that, that bothers me, but I can't change that for some of you. So I just want to encourage you to say, hey, you know what we got all afternoon? We can talk as soon as that photo is over. And so uh, we, we're actually going to have a drone take it up, up high, taking the photo, looking down, just because there's so many of us. So just encourage you to move there as quickly as you can and be prepared for that. And as quickly as you can look and listen to the instructions, it'll, it'll just really help and just appreciate that and encourage that. We also plan after, right after that, for some, we're going to try to do some group photos. So if you hear in, in these categories, just kind of have in your, minds, in your mind that they're going to ask for you to come forward. So after the group photo, some people are going to start that walk. Some people are going to get trays to help others. But some of you, and these are the groups that we want to get photos of, just these smaller groups. Pastors, former pastors and their families. Ever been a pastor at Tridelphia? Your family's here any, any, in that category. Uh, charter members and their families. And uh, I think you know who you are. I know who you are, charter members and families. If you, and so that's another group. Then another group, if you were involved in the planning, building, thinking, laying cinder block uh, mud, uh, swinging a hammer, a building in this church, we want to get a photo of that group as well. So if you, if you were there and did that, I, I was none of these. If you attended the groundbreaking, then we're going to want to do a group photo. We're going to do the best we can with this. You know, there's going to be a lot of people moving different ways. If you were ever part of Pathfinders or the, or the Adventurers leadership or those groups ever, we're going to ask those to, to try to take a photo. 
Um, anyone ever married in this church? That's another group. And, and anyone ever baptized or by profession of faith came into Tridel the Adventist church at Tridelphia? We're going we're gonna to get a group photo there as well. So we'll work with whoever's there. We'll do our best. Um, by God's grace, we'll get a great family photo. I mean, group photo, family, yeah, family photo. The end. Have a blessed Sabbath. If you have questions, ask someone. Thank you. Since the call to form a congregation in a part of Howard County that was at that time dark without an Adventist presence. Driven by mission to bring the light of present truth to the region, the small group met most often in the homes of Wallace Malcolm and Phil Lang. Phil Lang later became the first head elder of the Tridelphia Seventh day Adventist Church. Beginning in October of 1967, the pioneering group rented the Glen Elg. Methodist Church for their Sabbath services. At that time, the Methodist Church was located on Tridelphia Road. The location of the Glen Elk Church on the Tridelphia Road and the nearby Tridelphia Reservoir provided the impetus for the name of the new church plant. Elder May decided that I ought to be a pastor, so he assigned me to Tom Mostert as an intern. I was supposed to go to the Spencerville Church I never got there once. Two weeks later, he called me again and said, well, that's the end of your internship. I want you now to take the other church, which is Tridelphia and that old Methodist church up in Glen Elk. And he said, here's your job. I want you to find a piece of ground, raise the money, buy the ground, <laughs> design and build the church and fill it up. I said, wow, is that all there is to ministry? So, went to work. We found a piece of ground, raised the money, bought the ground, worked on designing the church with Buddy Hart, and um, just about ready to break ground when he moved me to Salisbury. At the Chesapeake Conference constituency meeting in March of 1968, Delegates voted to constitute the Tridelphia Seventh-day Adventist Church with 50 charter members. After a couple of years of prayer, literally knocking on doors and fasting, the infant church finally purchased 4.78 acres along Brighton Dam Road in July of 1970. Three years later, having paid off the land mortgage, a groundbreaking ceremony was held on April 15 of 1973. It was attended by Howard County and Chesapeake Conference officials, as well as local church members. The excitement about finally getting ready to start building a house for the Lord after all the problems that we had, trying to change the floodplain, and trying to be ready for after all the paperwork was done and all the revisions had to be made to actually get to the place where we were putting the shovels in for the first time. That was the excitement that I remember about the day that we started and dedicated to the Lord this process of actually beginning to build. Church members, young and old, under the guidance of experienced construction contractors, Roy Tatry, Wallace Malcolm, and Helmut Yadomsky, helped to build the church, which had been designed by architect Buddy Hart. Hey, Buddy Hart was a very fine architect, but he also was doing nursing homes and hotels and stuff, and he made more money at those. So it didn't take me very long to figure that out, and so I went to his house down in Tacoma Park every Monday morning at 8 o'clock, because when I was there, he'd work on my church. When I would leave, he'd lay it aside and go back to things that made him money. And we became really close friends. I even ended up having his funeral a few years ago. And 
There was a member there at the Department of the Review that took the plan that Buddy did and did a rendering. And it was a very well done uh, picture of what the church would look like. And that helped us raise money. I remember I went to one of our members and I said, I need somebody that would put in the lead gift toward our building program. And he said, well, what would that be? And I said, well, I need somebody that would start us off with a $10,000 gift. Around this time, the Methodist congregation sold the old church Tridelphia had been renting, and the Tridelphia congregation briefly rented the space of the more recently constructed Methodist church on Burnt Woods Road. One of the first baptisms to be held was while the church was yet under construction. Two souls committed their lives to Christ on June 7, 1975, Neil Souter and Joyce Ludy. Well, the day, of, the day of my baptism, I came over here bright and early and um, met some friends over here. My husband and family did not know about that I was doing this, that I had chosen to do this. And it was a beautiful, beautiful day in April. There were no clouds in the sky at the time. So um, I was excited and I was nervous but the baptism itself was interesting because there was, the walls were up, but the, but the roof was only the beams. And so when the actual baptism took place and I was being dipped, I looked up at the blue sky and just about that time, a bird flew over. And I thought that was God's blessing. Nine years after setting out to establish a presence in a section of Howard County devoid of representation of the unique Advent message, the Tridelphia Seventh-day Adventist Church held its first service in their own sanctuary on June 5, 1976. In line with their missionary outlook, three baptisms were held as a part of that inaugural Sabbath service. Well, my husband, uh, Bob Sanford, was in uh, Europe working on the NASA project. So I came by myself with our two boys, Jay and Russell, and I put them in Sabbath school and then I crept up the stairs to see what was going on up here. It was totally unfinished. And the sun came through the stained glass window, which was made by one of the members, Dennis Cruz. Uh, and I felt like the Holy Spirit just came in on a sunbeam and I really liked it. It was in October of 1976 that we first visited here. It was an incredibly rainy day, very dark. You know how it gets when it's really rainy in October. It, it just, you know, really dark day, very cloudy. And as we headed home, I think my sister was driving. I can't remember for sure. She said, wasn't that a be beautiful stained glass window? And I said, what stained glass window? Because it was so dark, I really, and my attention was not called to it because it was very dark. The second time I was here was in 1977 in May. And there are some pictures from that occasion that I, I brought my camera. It was a beautiful day, stunningly beautiful spring day. The third time that I visited was the last day of June in 1977, and that's when I turned in my request for transfer membership here, just the third time I was here. And uh, my sister and I were voted into membership here the last day of September 1977, so it's been almost exactly 46 years that I've been a member here. Ten years after their first service in the sanctuary on May 10, 1986, a dedication service was held where the mortgage was burned. The church had paid off an estimated $225,000 mortgage. The Weatherall's had a open house at their house on numerous occasions where they invited the community to come in and taste and see about how people live with just vegetarian living from good foods that had no meat involved in it whatsoever. And it was just amazing to the community. And some of them actually attended our church as a result of that. Most of us lived in a five mile circle around the church. 
And so you had connections in the community. We had standing room only when Mrs. Lang arranged to have a hydrotherapy water treatment class. We were all surprised at how many people came out to learn how to treat family members. And we had bread makes and a clothing exchange, a school, back to school clothing exchange. They brought, for every two items you brought, you could take one. And it turned out everybody was bringing 10 items for every one they would take. But it was nice for the community to get together. Uh, the biggest thing we did with the community was maybe later on with, through Anne's House of Nuts. Joyce and I would order nuts in cases. We had $1,200 profit for an uh, investment offering at one year and maybe more the next year. Further maximizing the use of the property owned by the church, members Laverne Binder and Bob Blum spearheaded the construction of the Chapel in the Woods in 1996. When the pandemic hit in 2020, this space became invaluable. Chandler Riley and Fred Harding led out in the project to power the outdoor meeting space, facilitating continued services during times of social distancing. From the start, Tridelphia Seventh-day Adventist Church was established to be a light in Howard County. The building represents the commitment to the mission that its pioneers had and stands as a physical manifestation of the ministry of its members. But let's not just admire the past. Let's gain inspiration from those who've gone before us and set their vision as our foundation to be the hands and feet of Jesus in our community. Will you stand with me as we sing our opening song, number 348. We've been talking about the church, our church here, and this one is The Church Has One Foundation, number 348.
My name is Randy Murphy. I remember the first time I walked on this property, it was poison ivy and briars, and all kinds of stuff. It's hard to even imagine what you folk have done with this place. I thank you for it. At this time, it's time for us to pray. So if you would like, kneel with me. My Father, I pray that your name will be hallowed. And today, as we offer our praise and thanksgiving for life itself and for the beautiful Sabbath that you provided for this, our special day, my memory goes back to that country road, very few houses and a wooded lot. Now we see a lovely and functional church. We're all greatly blessed. And we express our thanksgiving to you, a loving God and wonderful, caring Savior. We thank you for traveling mercies for those of us who came from near and far, gathered here. And for those, Lord, that live only in our memory, they're no longer here, who had a positive influence upon the ministry that was established on this very spot. Lord, today we pray for Elder Wilson and his team at the General Conference the Division and Union and the Chesapeake Conference, and call your special people both here and around the world. We keep looking up. We're expecting your return. Lord, keep us faithful and active, spreading the word, the good news about your love for everyone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. My name is Pratap Rao. It's the shorter form of my name. So the middle name, I've dropped it, but Pratap Rao is my name. And I've been here at Tridelphia for the last five years and just love being a member of Tridelphia Church. Uh, I have the offering call this morning, but I just noticed that most of what I, was, I thought I had to cover has already been covered. So I don't have a whole lot to say, but since I prepared something, let me share it with you, okay? The pastor of a famous church had recently retired after having led his congregation for well over a quarter of a century. Starting with just a few dozen members, he had built it into one of the largest and most vibrant congregations in that part of the country. Through good times and bad, he was always there for his members, and they loved him for it. But now he was gone, and the void that he left behind was keenly felt by all who had known him. The new pastor coming in felt totally, woefully inadequate to the task. How could he possibly fill the shoes of so great a man as his predecessor? Then, in a moment of inspiration, or should I say sheer desperation, he did something I wish every new pastor would do. Just prior to his first Sunday as pastor, he decided to pay a visit to some longtime members of this congregation. And to each of them, he asked the question, if, I, if you could say one thing to me 
before I enter the pulpit of that great church next Sunday morning, what would it be? A little old lady, all wrinkled and bent over, but blessed with the wisdom of Solomon, responded, just remember this. Each person that you see, each pair of eyes that you look into as you are preaching is sitting beside his or her own pool of tears. Each of us sits beside our own pool of tears. Some pools may be deeper than others, but we all have our own pool of tears. What this dear lady wanted her pastor to know was that the world and even the church is full of broken and hurting people. People who are searching desperately for hope in a world where hope has run dry. And turning to the pastor said, your task, pastor, is to point people to Jesus, the only hope for mankind. Just give them Jesus, pastor, and you will have given them the best reason to live. But if you cannot do that, you might as well go do something else for a living, like selling used cars, perhaps. The Clarksburg, Tridelphia area, where our church presently sits, is in affluent Howard County. Million dollar homes are all around us. People here have everything, but even in the midst of plenty, one can sense that there is something lacking in their lives. An emptiness as big as the sky, a desperate yearning for peace, happiness, and true contentment that all the money in the world cannot buy. Sensing this, a small group of Adventists got together in 1968, and that was the beginning of the Tridelphia Church. Our mission should always remain evangelistic. With mission as our primary purpose, we have always kept our sanctuary simple yet elegant. I find the words of Donald Messer very instructive. When the essence of the church and its ministry is no longer mission, euthanasia of the ecclesia occurs inevitably. Churches born in mission are preoccupied now with management and maintenance. The dysfunctional church, oriented to its own self-perpetuation and support, neglects its responsibility of being the people of God serving in the world. I don't want, we don't want that ever to happen to Tridelphia. We must continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus. To that end, every ministry in this church is mission-oriented, every one of them. Even our potlucks. We meet people there who find Jesus in our potlucks. Our children's ministries, our Sabbath schools, our Bible study, literature distribution, feeding the poor, our involvement in the Howard County Fair every year and the July 4th parade, prophecy seminars, our health seminars, all of them have mission as their focus. But you know, all of those things, most of them take place, a lot of them take place in this building. And over the last 50 years, we've hardly made any changes to this building. With the exception of the extension of the fellowship hall and the addition of the pastor's office, this has remained pretty much the way it is. But now, wear and tear and all the other things and not enough room, we need to build a little more. But not something so elaborate, simple, that will serve our purposes. Hope Rising is the name we've given to that initiative to raise funds to, to take care of some of the needs that we have, like a new roof. If we don't replace the roof soon, then we will have to stop singing our showers of blessing because we all get wet on Sabbaths here. <laughs> and then we want to have put an elevator here so it can be user-friendly for some of the older people. I'm getting old and I, I would rather ride the elevator. And there are so many other projects that you will find in your program to be supported by the offering that we give. Why did we call it Hope Rising, although it has to do about building? Because in this final analysis, it's not about buildings. The buildings and the programs we have are a means of reaching out to people. They're all evangelistic. So let us remember the words of that old lady, the pastor. Just give them Jesus. Just give them Jesus, and you will have given them the only reason to live. Amen. Hope Rising is the name we gave to this initiative. Our goal was $1.5 million, and we have raised, Tony, about, about a million dollars we've raised, and we have another 500 to go. 500,000. 
And I pray that you would dig deep into your pockets. Don't dig too deep because the coins settle down at the bottom. You want to get the, the lighter stuff. Okay? And give a generous offering, thanking God for what he's done for this church. And may this church continue to be a beacon of light. Like a city on a hill. We are literally a city on a hill because we're up a slope. And many have come to know Jesus Christ because of our presence. We're not here because of a building. We're here to reach people for Jesus. If you cannot do that, we might as pull down the shutters and go do something else for a living. But God has put us here for a purpose. To be his hands and his feet in this community. Let us pray before we collect our offering. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this beautiful church. Lord, so many of us have been blessed here. So many of us have found you here. And Lord, may this church continue to be a beacon of light to you in this area. Many people who have everything that money can buy, but who have no peace because they do not know Jesus. May we continue through our ministries and everything else we do, reach out to them so that they can find Jesus and find hope to go on in this life in spite of all the problems that, that beset them. Once again, Lord, thank you for this Sabbath. Thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for our friends who have come here from far and near. And may we enjoy the fellowship that, that you have prepared for us here. And take this offering, Lord, that we give today and multiply it and use it for the purpose for it is intended. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> In the brief history of this church that Tony provided me a few days ago, I noticed that Tridelphia Church from its very inception was big on Christian education. And 50 years later, we still are big on Christian education. We want our young people to be able to attend our schools and gain a good Adventist education. And so every Sabbath, in addition to our general offering, we also collect another offering where the kids come by with their baskets and be generous and drop some money in there and help the cause of, children, of Christian education. And after that, we'll have a story by Wayne Harris. We're going to be singing number 218, When He Cometh, while the children are coming up and getting their offerings. So kids, come on up and get some baskets and go around and collect the money while we're singing number 218, When He Cometh. When he cometh, when he cometh to make up his jewels, all his jewels, precious jewels, his loved and his own. Like the stars of the morning, his bright crown of joy, their beauty, bright gems for 
Morning, Triadelphia. My name is Wayne, and yes, some people do call me Little Wayne, so I'm okay with that. Um, on the screen, you all, I want to thank you all for all your encouragement and the time I've been here and with the Little Wayne Project. That is the cover of the first Little Wayne book. We're actually finally getting them done. God led us to the great illustrator, and that's the first one. So we're hopefully going to have something for you all by the holidays. If you're interested, please see me later, and I'll try to help you make sure you are uh, in tune with the Little Wayne Project. Good morning, boys and girls. We have a great story. I bet you all of you all have been here 50 years, haven't you? No? You haven't been here 50 years? Yeah. Do you know what 50 years is? Yeah. Boys and girls. Well, Question. 50 is 50 years old? Yeah. Oh, no, 50 years is not old. We just thought we'd ask the children. All right, this morning, I have a story for you. Now, who knows what a tractor is? You have a, you've seen a tractor? Have you ever been driving on the road and seen a tractor driving? or even on the highway, did you know, you see that orange thing on the back? Tractors have to have, it's called a reflector and lights when they're driving on the road. So if cars come up behind it, the car won't run into the tractor and have an accident. So when Little Wayne was small, Little Wayne's daddy had a tractor and he used to drive it on the road. And sometimes you have to pull something behind the tractor. That's how you mix the dirt up till it was things behind. Now see, you can't see the lights now though, can you? You can't see the reflector. So there's a law, there's a rule. When daddies drive the tractor on the road, he had to have something called an escort. An escort is a car drives behind the tractor and he turns on his flashing lights. Do you know what the flashers are? Your mom and dad, they, all the lights blink. So any car that comes up will see the flashing lights. They'll slow down and they'll know warning. So do you know little Wayne was made? a little bit bigger than him. He wasn't a little small boy, but he wasn't a big boy. Little Wayne could drive on the street. Now, I want you parents to talk to your children when you get home about this, okay? I'm not suggesting, but little Wayne lived out and kids out at that time, they started driving on the street. So daddy said, little Wayne, I need you to help me. I need you to be my escort. I'm going to drive the tractor on the road and I need you to drive the truck behind me and turn on the flashers and just drive slow behind me. Can you do that, little Wayne? Little Wayne, oh sure, Dad, I can drive, no problem. So sure enough, Daddy got the tractor and he's driving on the road just like that. And he's driving and little Wayne's driving behind him. Now we came to an intersection. That's where the stop signs are. You know what an intersection is? Do you all believe that's the intersection you're looking at right now? So daddy's on the tractor and Wayne's behind him and they had to stop. So daddy goes through the stop sign and little Wayne's behind him, no problem. Little Wayne had to stop also, right? 
you always have to stop at the stop signs, boys and girls. So little Wayne's driving. He puts on the brake, and daddy goes to the stop sign, and little Wayne pulls up to the stop sign, and as soon as little Wayne pulls up to the stop sign, would you believe what pulled up to the left? A police officer pulls up. And daddy didn't see it. So daddy kept going straight. And little Wayne sees the police officer, and the police officer sees little Wayne. Little Wayne's thinking, uh-oh, uh-oh. He tries to look tall. <laughs> and sure enough, as soon as little Wayne pulls to the intersection, that police officer pulls right behind him. And little Wayne sees the lights. Little Wayne's getting nervous. Little, because daddy's just going on down further. So little Wayne's trying to drive real careful and slow. And sure enough, woo! What's that sound? Woo, woo, woo! And the lights came on. Oh my goodness, little Wayne's scared now. Because daddy's going on down the road. And little Wayne, he says, okay, maybe I should just run. <laughs> no, I can't go that fast. Maybe I should just jump out of the truck and run away. No, I couldn't do that. Little Wayne wasn't afraid of the police officers because police officers are bad people. You know why little Wayne was scared? He didn't have a driver's license. He was too young to get a driver's license. So little Wayne said, okay, he knew what to do. He pulled the truck over and he hit the brakes and he stopped and he just watched daddy go away. <laughs> daddy, don't you see me back here, daddy? Daddy, you said you'd never leave me. Daddy, I'm in trouble, daddy. Daddy just gone. And sure enough, the door swings open and the police officer gets out of his car and he walks right up to the window. Little Wayne rolls down the window and he looks at the big police officer. Son, aren't you young to be driving? And Little Wayne knew he was going to jail. <laughs> that big officer's looking and he had the glasses on. Little Wayne is small and the officer's like, Daddy. And all Wayne can do is look at the officer and think of all the food he's gonna miss when he's in jail. <laughs> all the dinners and he's gonna to have to wear those striped pajamas. <laughs> and he's gonna miss his soft bed and that hard bed. Cause, and he's just looking at the officer and he doesn't know what to say and the officer's talking to him and he doesn't even hear it. Little Wayne's just worried because he's going to jail. But then out of the corner of his eye, Little Wayne sees something. Is that? Here comes Daddy. Daddy isn't walking. Daddy isn't even jogging. Daddy is full on running. Little Wayne's like, wow, Daddy can still pretty fast for old dude, isn't he? And Daddy, Daddy's moving, he's running, and he's waving, and he comes to his officer, wait, that's my truck. That's my child. He's doing what I told him to do. And the officer says, he is, but does he have a driver's license? Daddy says, no, he doesn't have a driver's license, but he's my escort. And daddy goes in his pocket and daddy holds out his hand. And the officer looks at his hand and he goes, all right, well, you be careful now. You have a nice day. Little Wayne didn't have to go to jail. <laughs> and daddy said, come on, Wayne, we're going home. And sure enough, Wayne drove on up the road and got behind that and they drove the rest of the way home. Boys and girls, even though you're small, sometimes you have problems, don't you? Who is the daddy we can call on? Come on, somebody knows the answer, don't they? God, who can we call on when we have problems? Jesus, can't we? Let me hear you say, who can we call on when we have problems? Jesus, and even though Jesus sometimes may seem far away, we can call, Jesus, don't you see me? Jesus, you said you'd never leave me. And even when we get big, we have bigger problems, don't we? And we can still call Jesus. And guess what Jesus does? He turns around and he comes a running. And what does Jesus do to trouble? Jesus says, trouble, that's my child. He's doing what I told him to do. And what does Jesus do, family? He holds out his hand. Dear Father, thank you for the story. Thank you for 50 years of Triadelphia. Thank you for these children. Thank you for bringing us together for such an occasion, Lord God. Thank you for your promises. Lord God, we're looking forward to the day when you're going to come running down the highway. And you're going to tell trouble, these are your children. 
we have done what you said, and you're going to hold out your hand and take us home. Father God, hold us till that time, and we look forward to that anniversary in the sky. Forgive us and save us. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Children, stay here, okay, because you're going to do the uh, children's choir now, okay? All right, thank you. Perfect, sir. Slightly, almost overstepped. No, it's okay. Right on time. I know. It's like, I don't know. There was no rehearsal. But it worked perfect. Yeah, no, it's no, fine. no. It's fine. I wasn't the focus. It was a good story. No, kids, no. kids were like, "Please stop, sir! Please stop, sir! Please leave him." Happy Sabbath, church. Um, the children are going to sing two items. The first one is a joyful heart is good medicine. And the second one is going to be we are his hands. By broken spirit is the broken spirit rise up the bones. Proverbs seventeen twenty two. A joyful heart is. Good medicine, good medicine, a joyful heart, a joyful heart is good medicine, a joyful heart is good.
Hello, my name is Theron Williams, and I have been coming to Triadelphia since 2013, and I was baptized here in 2019, and I've been in Pathfinder since 2019 as well. And I will be doing our scripture reading, which is found in Luke 15, verses 17 through 20. And it reads, But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Good morning, Triadelphians. Past Triadelphians, present Triadelphians, and future Triadelphians. What a privilege to have so many of you here today with us. Thank you, Theron, for reading our scripture. We're going to be focusing on that in just a few moments. Now, I said good morning, and it is about two minutes to 12. But don't worry. Let me tell you, it's all within the plan that has been carefully orchestrated. In fact, we are seven minutes ahead of schedule. <laughs> and don't be too concerned because this is going to be a short sermon. But one focusing on the greatest anniversary reunion and homecoming. I want to just express deep appreciation to our current pastor, Pastor Samuel Nunez, and his wonderful, capable wife, Carolina. And what a blessing to have had many pastors in Triadelphia. And what a privilege to have Pastor Murphy with us. Uh, he was recounting earlier behind the door here when we were preparing how things came about. Uh, Pastor and Mrs. Smith, thank you for being with us, and so many who have come back to help us celebrate this wonderful 50th anniversary of the groundbreaking. And in reality, Tridelphia started about five years before that with certain official activities. And what a marvelous video our team put together. Can you say amen? amen. That was a beautiful video. Uh, Joyce, I was sitting here looking up <laughs> and trying to imagine no roof, just the beams and that bird flying over when you were baptized. What a, what a beautiful thing. Darlene, thank you for the memories you shared too. Uh, some of these who have been members for a long time. The window that you see behind you is a very striking one. Uh, Lee Belcher mentioned that he didn't even see it the first time he came. Actually, on a very sunny day, you could not miss this window. Because when the sun during a particular time of the year was coming through, it would hit especially over here, Beth and Rick, where you are, and Pastor Fondel, and it was very intense. So just another little tidbit. We're going to be spending a lot of time this afternoon. I invite every one of you back. It's going to be an exciting day, exciting evening into the Vespers. Uh, Bob Blum, one of our members here for many years, he's now deceased, and Pastor George Rice. We're so privileged to have Janet, his wife, with us today. Pastor Rice passed away a few, just a few years ago, very recently, and we're glad to have his daughter with us as well. 
Bob Blum and Pastor Rice and others helped to put, and you will not know this until, unless I tell you, to put special darkened, smoky, glazed glass on that window so people can sit here comfortably without that glare. You know, all of these little things help to make up what Triadelphia is. What a beautiful service we've had so far. Uh, the children's story, thank you, Wayne. We're glad you're a good driver even today. <laughs> and the children, thank you so much for your, your beautiful rendition that a joyful heart is like a medicine. And also that we are his hands. And uh, you will notice that the whole theme for this weekend is we are the hands and feet and the voice of Jesus. There's another anniversary taking place today. This is our 50th. There's another anniversary. Today it is being celebrated the 73rd anniversary of Pathfinders. And this is World Pathfinder Day. Now we happen to have with us in our audience, I don't know quite how it was planned, but our world youth leader, Pastor and Mrs. Busi Kumalo. We're so glad to have you. Just stand for a moment so that people will see who you are. And they are just recently uh, come from South Africa. Thank you. And uh, we're grateful to have you here today. Now, I want to assure you, Pastor Kamalo, that normally on a Pathfinder Day, you would see magnificent array of Pathfinders. Tridelphia has a very active adventurers and Pathfinder clubs. And we praise God for that. But we're grateful to have all of you with us. And... Uh, it's just a privilege to be part of this homecoming. Now we're going to be reminded, as we have already been, of many different aspects in which God has led the Triadelphia Church from very humble beginnings with the poison ivy and all the thorns and everything else, Pastor Murphy, uh, to its present continued vibrant Christ-centered preaching, Bible-focused, Holy Spirit-led outreach commitment and the warm fellowship, the warm welcoming atmosphere, a genuine love for the Lord, being the hands and feet of Jesus in this region and area. Now many of you have wonderful memories of this church, both current and former memory, uh, members. Let me thank you for your commitment to the great Advent movement. And what a privilege it is to belong to a local church. And Nancy and I have been members here at Tridelphia for many years. Uh, we've seen ups and downs, uh, small congregations, and now a very growing congregation, and we praise God for that. It's just been a great opportunity to belong to a local church that has expansive evangelistic outreach programs, services, activities that bring people to the foot of the cross and the knowledge of the three angels' messages and Jesus soon coming. You see, we are the hands and the feet of Jesus. And we're here to testify of those rewarding experiences and blessings that God has provided to give him the glory for the 50 years of progress that Triadelphia Seventh-day Adventist Church has seen as part of the Chesapeake Conference. Now, being part of this 50th anniversary of this church can be exciting and energizing. And it's wonderful to review the past history and how God has led us in the past. And to see people that you haven't seen for a while. And to be renewed in God's service. In a few hours, this 50th anniversary will be over. And you will miss the association and the fellowship. And we praise God that 
It's a beautiful day and you will eat the fellowship dinner without it raining. This is wonderful. <laughs> As Tony said, this is now plan C or D, but that's okay, it's going to work. No problem at all. But I want to tell you, even though you're going to miss the fellowship and the association, God wants you and me, all of us, to stay in close contact with him on a daily basis so that we can truly be the hands and feet of Jesus. Because we are preparing through the power and the grace of Jesus for the great anniversary reunion and homecoming ever assembled that is just ahead, Jesus' second coming. Amen. Now let's reflect on some reunions in Scripture. After creating Adam and Eve on the sixth day of a literal creation week recently, God created opportunities for reunions with those that he had created. You see, on the next day, the Sabbath, he created a weekly reunion reminding Adam and Eve and all of us of his love, his creative power, his authority over the universe and over our lives. In addition to the weekly Sabbath on which we are celebrating his creative power today, the very day on which he celebrated along with Adam and Eve, he daily visited Adam and Eve in the cool of the evening. Now, we're not sure how long these daily reunions continued. However, the devil tempted Adam and Eve to disbelieve God's incredible love for them because of the entrance of sin <clears throat> into this world. We have been in a great controversy between Christ and Satan ever since. And in fact, it started even before that in heaven. However, the Father, <clears throat> the Son, and the Holy Spirit worked on a plan of salvation through Christ's life, death, and resurrection, <clears throat> excuse me, and his special ministry in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, and that's where he is right now, so that no one need be lost if they humbly submit to Jesus Christ, his justifying and his sanctifying power to allow us to grow into the likeness of Jesus through daily and weekly reunions. Now in John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, But as many as received him, to them gave, he gave the right to become children of God. Now regardless of how far you have wandered from God, he promises in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And what a promise that is for all of us here at the 50th Triadelphia Anniversary Homecoming Reunion. Marvelous Bible promise. You see, God wanted to share with Adam and Eve that evening when he came for his daily reunion after they had sinned and they were hiding from him. Genesis 3 and verse 8 records, they heard the sound of Jesus or of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Now, God longed for that daily reunion, and I want to tell you, past and present, Tridelphians, God still longs for that daily reunion with every one of us. You see, we are revived and reformed 
through a daily reunion, reading God's precious holy word, studying the spirit of prophecy, having dedicated prayer throughout the day as the hands and feet of Jesus. The written word, the Bible, and Christ, the living word, provide us with spiritual reunion and salvation. God did meet Adam and Eve, explaining the plan of salvation where God would put enmity or distance, anger, between the serpent, the devil, and the woman, the church. And as Genesis 3.15 says, between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Now the great controversy would end with a victorious Christ calling us to the greatest anniversary reunion ever, using us to be his hands and feet in calling others to be part of it. Can you say amen? amen. He calls us to this anniversary reunion with him daily, weekly, as we are doing today, and forever. The Bible records many fascinating reunions. However, Jesus' profound story of the prodigal son is so very, very touching. Luke 15, verses 11 to 12 say, a certain man had two sons, and the young of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. The prodigal son traveled, spent all his money, and faced a great famine. He found a job feeding pigs. Now that's the last job a Jew would ever want to engage in. He was so hungry that he ate the pig's food. How low could you get? Sometimes it takes a big challenge in a person's life to really understand where you are in your relationship with your heavenly father. Verse 17 says, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's Hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. He headed home to tell his father to make him a servant. Then comes one of the most fantastic verses in scripture. Verse 20, and that marvelous reunion. And he arose and came to his father. And when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. You see, I want to tell you, my dear friends, his father never gave up looking for him. We could spend the next 30 minutes talking about that. God is constantly looking for you and for me. It says in verse 20, it ends up with this touching, touching scene. The father ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The exciting reunion took place and the father was ready. The son confessed, but the father didn't even hear him. He ordered the best robe, a ring of authority, and sandals. You see, each of us here at this reunion, we need Christ's robe of righteousness. Every day, putting us in a right relationship with Jesus and heaven. Well, the father ordered a huge banquet for his returned son. Probably was not in the back part of the parking lot. But it was a marvelous banquet. You're going to have a banquet today and you're going to enjoy it. It was the grandest of reunions. Christ's Object Lessons tells us 
do not listen to the enemy's suggestions to stay away from Christ until you have made yourself better. If you wait until then, you will never come. Arise and go to your father. He will meet you a great way off. If you take one step, even one step toward him in repentance, he will hasten to enfold you in his arms of infinite love. What a marvelous thought for us at this 50th anniversary reunion. The greatest anniversary reunion is just ahead. Jesus is coming soon. People all over the world need to hear that precious message from you and from me as his hands, his feet, and his mouthpiece. As Triadelphians, or wherever you now live. Pray for continued evangelistic and service outreach, not only here at Tridelphia, but around this globe as we are coming to the very end of time. As Nancy and I travel the world and we see many, many things, as you listen to the news on a daily basis, I don't think any of you can escape the fact we are living in the very end of time. Please remember that. Let's share the love of Christ, ministering to people physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually. They need that reunion with Christ. Be part of total member involvement. Everyone doing something for Jesus. His hands, his feet, his mouthpiece. And as a result of this 50th anniversary and homecoming. Tell the Lord that you will be his hands and feet to reach out to others with the wonderful three angels messages of Revelation 14. And let me tell you, my friends, don't let anyone fool you into thinking that the three angels messages is just about gloom and doom. The very core of the three angels messages is the righteousness of Jesus Christ, pointing back to the true worship of God. Proclaim this everlasting gospel and Christ's righteousness. Share that apostate churches are like Babylon and have fallen away from biblical truth. Urge people to align themselves in reunion with Christ through his word and accept his sign of love and loyalty, the day of reunion that he has appointed this very exact Holy Sabbath day, which is his sign of connection with us. Be a witness for the Lord, bringing hope and encouragement in these very last days of Earth's history as the great controversy comes to a climax in the very near future. Now, the wonderful book, Patriarchs and Prophets. I hope you're acquainted with the whole Conflict of the Ages series. The very first one, Patriarchs and Prophets, says on page 667, a consecrated Christian life is ever shedding light and comfort and peace. It is characterized by purity, tact, simplicity, and usefulness. It is controlled by that unselfish love that sanctifies the influence. It is full of Christ and leaves a track of light wherever its possessor may go. As we commit ourselves here at Tridelphia today, during this marvelous 50th anniversary, may your witness for Christ leave a track of light wherever you go. All over the world, people are preparing for the greatest reunion of all time. Jesus said three times in Revelation 22, the last chapter of the last book of the Bible, Behold, I come quickly. The registration for that reunion is giving your heart 
daily to Christ. The registration is not even involving a name tag at that reunion because the blood of Jesus Christ will be your entry. You won't even have to bring food for the anniversary reunion fellowship meal. The Father will provide everything you need, just like the father of the prodigal son. God has taken care of everything except our own humble submission to him in a daily and a weekly reunion, being his hands, his feet, and his mouthpiece in total member involvement. You see, what a wonderful homecoming and reunion it will be when Jesus returns, surpassing any 50th anniversary you have ever attended. Soon, people will look into that eastern sky, and they'll see a small dark cloud about half the size of a man's hand, growing brighter and brighter and larger and larger and filling the entire sky. And there in the middle of that marvelous cloud, seated in the, million, in the middle of millions of angels, will be our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we'll look up and say, this is the God we have waited for. He will save us. And Jesus will look down and say, well done, good and faithful servants, enter into the joy of of your Lord, and we will rise to meet the Lord in the air for the greatest anniversary reunion ever. Don't miss that final reunion. As God's hands, his feet, and his mouthpiece invite people to be there, accepting Christ and his everlasting gospel. How many of you today at this 50th anniversary and homecoming. Whether you're a past member, a present member, how many of you, or a visitor, how many of you are willing to say, yes, Lord, here I am, use me. I will go and share your last day message so that we can be ready for that marvelous anniversary reunion in heaven. If you want to commit yourself. Would you just stand to your feet right now? Amen. We're going to sing a wonderful hymn of commitment. Oh, that will be glory. Glory for me. As we look towards Jesus' soon return, we're going to sing that song, and I invite you to turn in your hymnals to 435. I'm going to ask, uh, going to ask Tony, just before we sing, if he would just share, as you're standing, he's not going to talk too long, but just share some last-minute announcements and details, and then we will commit ourselves in this beautiful song together as we look forward to the greatest reunion ever planned, Jesus soon coming. Tony? Apologies to interrupt this, uh, this thought. So just, just a couple things to draw your attention because I forgot to tell you that to use the hashtag TrySDA50 for sharing your media with us. Please sign the guest book, I forgot. Uh, I forgot to introduce the video. What did I remember? Um, but you didn't forget that lunch is going to be served in the, in the parking lot and that it's plan C. You didn't forget that. And to help others. Thank you. Let's sing with great conviction because Jesus is coming soon.
How many people want to be there that day when we will give God the glory? Amen. What a wonderful homecoming reunion it will be with our Lord and Savior. Uh, just before we pray, let me remind you of the instructions for the photo. And we are going to proceed out of the church. Are we going down on the side? All right, so the side where the hill is, and uh, please no one stumble or fall. Amen. We want you to be safe today and happy and rejoicing in the Lord. But don't forget the photo, so you will have all afternoon to talk. And uh, let's proceed as quickly as we can and listen to the directions of all those who will be leading. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we are so grateful that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit put together the plan of salvation even before the fall of this world. We will give you all the glory and we will sing to you and praise your name, giving glory to you for what you have done. And it will be glory for us to be with you on that wonderful day when you return. And we will be assembled in the greatest anniversary reunion ever. Lord, we look forward to Jesus' soon return. And until that time, help us to be the hands, the feet, the mouthpiece of Christ, sharing with others why Triadelphia Church and every Seventh-day Adventist church exists. And that is to worship you and then to tell others about you. Thank you for hearing us and bless the rest of the activities today. We entrust the Sabbath and our anniversary celebrations into your hands. We give you all the glory. Bless us now as we continue this beautiful day of celebration and of glory to you. In Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen.